Hi, I'm Corey Litzenberger from CGLTax.ca, and this is Brainstorming Plus Tax. Hi, everybody. This is Corey Litzenberger from CGL Strategic Business and Tax Advisors, and today we're talking about tax and business advisory. And one of the things I'm going to talk about as we go forward on these things is kind of the topics of the day that are happening or topics that are timely in the day-to-day operations of the small business when it comes to the tax world, when it comes to the business world. Now, what I'm going to talk to you today is for those of you who are starting out as entrepreneurs, here's 10 things that you should know about building your own business. And the first thing is kind of obvious, do it right. Whether it's from selling the right products or to performing the right services, it is, it is quite often the case that your customers will not understand or know your product or service to the level of detail that you do. But if you cut corners in the product or service, be prepared for the backlash that will come from your customers. Now, the second one is obviously is to ask for it. And when I say ask for it, I'm asking for the businesses. So people will usually talk about negative experiences before they'll talk about good ones. Uh, When you have a customer that is happy, don't be afraid to ask them for a referral or a review or testimonial, something you can use on your website or have them go on Google and give you a rating or on on your Facebook page. One of the phrases we like to use is when someone says that they really like what we've done, we say, well, don't tell us, tell your friends. And then we'll send them links to, to where they can make reviews on social media. Now, another thing is, is you have to set yourself out from the others. So the third thing would be to, to wow them. What makes your product or service better than your competition? Don't focus on what you like about it. Don't, don't ever, don't sit there and talk about how much things you like about what you do, but rather you have to focus on what the customer is going to like about it. Is it your approach to customer service? Is it your approach to sales? Find your expertise and exploit it. Everyone knows someone else that does what you do. So focus on what sets you apart from the rest of the competition. Number four, and I stress this a lot, and I do my best in my own business being self-employed, and that is get back to them. Nothing is more frustrating to a customer than leaving a message by phone or by email and not hearing back promptly. This doesn't mean that you have to sit and wait by your inbox or telephone. But it does mean to set up internal targets on communication. For example, if you're using voicemail, have it in your message that you will get back to them within fill in the number of hours or business days, etc. And stick to that promise. No one likes hearing that we'll get back to you in one to two business days and then hear nothing until a week later. Cash is king. That's number five. I mean, cash is the lifeblood of your business. You need to plan ahead for large cash amounts to be paid, like taxes, for example. Many businesses fall behind because they get behind in their taxes or they use their line of credit, which is working capital, to finance long-term assets like equipment. If you stay ahead in your saving strategy and plan your financial levering properly, leveraging properly, sorry, you will be surprised how much extra money you have left. We, we see this all the time with, with when it comes to the cash side of things is that many people will forget to plan for the large purchases for taxes and they'll think that, uh, well, I didn't make any money because there's nothing in the bank account, but they're forgetting that there are certain things that are not tax deductible and that goes with capital assets, inventory, and where your cash is tied up, but you don't get the expense yet or you get it written off over time. In the case of assets, they're depreciated or in the case of inventory, you get the expense once you've sold it. And so If you have a lot of cash tied up in those types of things, you may be cash poor, but you may still have a tax bill coming along. So you need to make sure you can plan for those things ahead. Number six is do what you're good at. The biggest mistake a business owner can make is to try and do everything themselves. I mean, when I was starting out, I, I was everything. I was the receptionist. I was the accountant. I was the human resources. I was the marketing agent. Did everything and anything and everything. And when you're starting a small business, you have no choice. But as time goes on, you'll start to realize there are things that you become really good at. And then there's things that if you hired somebody to do that, you'd probably fired them for how bad they are. And and that's because that's how bad you are. Uh, You shouldn't be doing those types of things. You need to go out and find people and outsource some of that stuff. So, you know, I always try to say uh, you, you started your business because you had something you were good at. And if you start going away from that skill you have, 
you end up doing things that are not your strongest skills. That is a recipe for failure. Outsource your weaker skills. It could be bookkeeping, reception, sales, marketing, human resources. Use the free time to focus on your own skill set, which brings in the revenue. In cases of the trades, for example, it's very common to have subcontractors do something a little bit more specific to a job site than what the primary is good at. And so think of it in that respect, and that somebody is probably better at the small thing than you are, and you can uh, leverage their time and be more successful. Number seven, I always say this. I like, I like to do this. I, it's hard to do, but relationship first, network second. So first impressions speak volumes. People who have already established their business or customers are already approached by by others at networking events, by by people who are starting out, who are trying to pitch them the next big thing or, or become their friend in the hopes to get referrals. The most effective way to market your business, ironically, is not to talk about it. Make it a habit to meet new people at every event and try not to sit with the same person twice, you know, in, in short succession. Most of all, ask them about what they do. The more they get to talk about themselves, the more they will like being around you. And eventually, they will ask you about your business. And it will be an easier sale once you've built that relationship. It is a numbers game. I mean, we hear this all the time. Cold calling is just numbers, numbers, numbers. But you have to keep in mind that it is also about building that relationship. And the more you get a chance to meet more people to increase the numbers, the more you get a chance to plant the seeds for building that relationship, the ones that will sprout will come back and will be gravitated towards you because you made them feel comfortable. And so they'll, they'll weed themselves out as to who will help you build your business and who won't. Number eight is remember the little things. So you always want to be front and center in your customer's mind when they're thinking about your product or service. So look at marketing projects that might not be the norm. I mean, I get several Christmas cards and, or happy holidays or season's greetings from several people every year. Now, the funny thing with that is that it's almost expected now. And when we see 20, 30 cards coming in the mail, they kind of lose their luster. One of the things that we like to do, for example, is we look at marketing for the birthdays. And so by sending a birthday card or, or referral competitions or something to that effect, it's always the way to have people thinking about you. And many people will react differently, but it is hard to say something bad about someone that remembered your birthday. Your only risk is that they like it more than you thought and they tell their friends. I mean, if they don't like it, you're no worse off than if, if you didn't do anything. So uh, you might as well just give it a try. Number nine, don't sell yourself too short. A wonderful product or service will not make up for bad decisions and deficiencies in marketing, management, or finance. Keeping your prices low to attract business will make it just that much harder to raise your prices later. Many business owners underprice their products or services in an attempt to attract business. While this may be good as a starting point, this can become a very bad long-term business plan. They either have no understanding of their costs, or they are too busy to think about them. This can start a bad chain reaction of cash flow problems, profit problems, and stress that goes with it. The biggest mistake is thinking these problems can be solved by attracting more business when the problem is actually in your pricing. Number 10, lastly, don't cut corners. Now, this might be a little self-serving for myself, but we use it as well. We leverage in other suppliers, but it's self-serving. But when you look at professional advisors, accountants, lawyers, etc., there's nothing more expensive than a cheap advisor. Good lawyers, good accountants, and good business advisors make good livings, just like anyone else who is good at their job. Cutting corners and paying for cheap advice might just end up costing you more in the long run. So those are the 10 things that I I think that you should know about building your own business. I'm sure there's many other types out there that people uh, will will tell you and give their advice on, but these are the ones that I've seen from a pattern perspective of those uh, that have done well, things that they've done on their traits versus those who have struggled to get their business off the ground. For CGL Strategic Business and Tax Advisors, I'm Corey Litzenberger. Thanks for listening.